Another billionaire is buying another media company. The reasons why and the concerns surrounding the deal are all part of today's Down the Middle coverage. I'm Carl Azus, thankful to have you watching. We'll start with the company being bought. Twitter is a social media giant. Hundreds of millions around the world regularly use it, sharing their thoughts in tweets that are limited to 280 characters or less. The company has grown tremendously since it was founded in 2006, but it's been criticized for how it governs its users and the information they share. Many political conservatives, for example, have said Twitter has a double standard, that it's more likely to censor the tweets or suspend the accounts of conservatives than it is of political liberals. Twitter has denied doing this, saying its policies are based around users' behavior, not where they stand politically. But there have been several instances of Twitter appearing to suppress or put warning labels on conservative publications. That brings us to a question asked recently by billionaire businessman Elon Musk. The founder of SpaceX has said in the past he's not a conservative, that he's an independent whose views are politically moderate. But last month, Musk accused Twitter of failing to adhere to the principles of free speech. And he asked what should be done about that, given that the platform functioned as what he called a public town square. Well, he has decided to buy it. The agreement, which is worth more than $40 billion, is one of the biggest deals ever to put a public company into private ownership. Musk says he wants to make Twitter better than ever by adding new features, making its algorithm clearer to the public, and getting rid of spam bots on the platform. Congressional Republicans called the deal a victory for free speech and said they hoped it would keep technology companies from, quote, censoring users that have a different viewpoint. Musk is not the first billionaire to buy a major media company. In 2013, Jeff Bezos, the founder of Amazon, bought the Washington Post newspaper. In 2018, Mark Benioff, the founder of Salesforce, bought Time magazine. But there are critics of Musk's purchase of Twitter. Brian Todd reports on what they're saying. The world's richest man buying up one of the world's most powerful social media companies, generating huge buzz tonight. Twitter has agreed to sell itself to Elon Musk, the flamboyant, controversial CEO of Tesla and SpaceX, for about $44 billion, a deal that could bring enormous change to the popular platform. What we're talking about here is the confluence, really, of a number of conversations we're having nationally and internationally about you know, the power of billionaires, for example, um, the influence of tech platforms on democracies. We're going to have a, an option. With this purchase, Twitter will now be led by one of the quirkiest business titans America's ever known. Musk himself has used Twitter and his more than 80 million followers to build his brand, but also to troll others. You know, it's hard to know when exactly to take him seriously because he is so eccentric. And so when this idea came up, you know, we know that this would cost him billions of dollars. Even with his quirks, why should the average consumer care that Elon Musk will lead Twitter? Many of its users are government officials or government accounts or politicians or business leaders. Um, you know, that could have really uh, important effects on how the rest of us perceive many of these topics that um, have so many influential people engaging on. One concern critics have, Musk's goal of bolstering free speech on Twitter and his complaints about Twitter censoring too much content and its permanent bans of some users. I don't think we actually want an anything goes Twitter because we've seen that when conspiracy theorists are willing to use the platform to spread lies and disinformation, um, to spread hate and harassment campaigns. Between January and December of 2021, average gasoline prices in the United States rose about a dollar per gallon or more than 45% over the course of the year. In 2021, average grocery prices rose 3.5% and this year prices for gas and food have climbed even higher, in part because of widespread complications from the war in Ukraine. The Biden administration says it's not expecting a food shortage in the U.S. during the months ahead. But that may not hold true for the rest of the world. Russia's invasion of Ukraine shocked the oil market, sending crude skyrocketing and prices at the pump to record highs. But that could look like a blip compared to food prices. Consider this. Russia supplies 8% of global oil exports. But Ukraine and Russia together supply about 29% of all wheat exports. The prospects of sharply curtailed supplies from the world's breadbasket is sending gyrations through the market. Wheat futures surged in early March 
and have been volatile ever since. In the U.S., expect higher prices for bread and cereal, which were rising even before Russia launched its war in Ukraine in late February. But most U.S. consumer brands don't rely on imported wheat, so supply disruptions are unlikely. But that's not the case for the rest of the world. Russia and Ukraine are the top wheat suppliers for Egypt, Turkey, Nigeria, Indonesia, Bangladesh, and Pakistan. And it's not just wheat. Ukraine is also a major exporter of corn oil and the world's largest supplier of sunflower oil. Those prices have surged, too, as war prevents supply from leaving the country. Fears are growing that soaring prices in the Middle East and Africa could fuel social unrest. In the months before, world food prices hit a record high. More than a decade later, prices are again in record territory. And Russia's invasion of Ukraine is only making the situation worse. Cracks are already showing, with recent protests in Sri Lanka, Pakistan and Peru over rising food and fuel prices. A food crisis driven by shortages, skyrocketing prices and hunger could bring even more people to the streets. 10 second trivia. What is the most commonly used password online? 123456, QWERTY, password or default? Cybersecurity experts say the world's most common password is the first. 123456. Passwords and you. Many of us get annoyed at having to type upper and lowercase letters and numbers and special characters to get into online accounts. But cybersecurity is a growing problem and all of the potential solutions have drawbacks. The Verizon Wireless Company says weak passwords or ones that have been figured out or stolen are responsible for more than 80% of data breaches when someone who isn't authorized gets into an account. Some businesses require two-factor authentication, like when you're texted a code you have to enter in addition to your password, but hackers have reportedly found a way around those as well. CNBC reports that Apple, Google, and Microsoft are working on ways to address password insecurity. Instead of keyboard characters, your face or your fingerprint would be used to unlock your online accounts. Might sound more secure since only you have your exact fingerprint, but an image of that or your face can still be stolen, so constantly having to change and update passwords may still be easier. Amazon has been given the green light to build its HQ2, its second headquarters in Northern Virginia. The estimated cost is $2.5 billion, and it's supposed to have room for 25,000 workers. But it's the Helix design of it, which is unique, that kind of reminded me of soft serve ice cream. Other interpretations weren't all flattering. When it comes to its new second headquarters to be built across the Potomac from Washington, D.C., Amazon's designers are thinking outside the box. Give a little bit of your love, love to me. The Arlington County, Virginia board gave Amazon a lot of love. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Unanimously approving plans, including the Helix building with a walkable ramp surrounded by greenery, sort of a mountain hike that the public could access two days a month. Please tell me there's a slide to get down from the top after you hike it. Nope, sorry. The height will be about 350 feet. It does not have stories in the traditional sense. Twitter invented stories comparing the helix to everything from a rotini to a spaceship in disguise to the Tower of Babel. Some noted similarities to an ancient mosque built back in the 9th century in present-day Iraq. The helix sure is eye-catching, Amazon in its prime. And while this commenter used a bedazzled emoji to say, how cool is this building? Someone else weaponized another popular emoji. Looks pretty shiny to us. Guess if you're one of the world's wealthiest companies, you're gonna put your own spin on things. Try to turn heads, ramp up, spiral up, spring forward, hang around, stay ahead of the curb, design with a twist. Sure, critics might be turned AMAs off, but it will raise eye lines to the skyline. Kingwood Park High School is in Kingwood, Texas. It is great to have you watching. You get today's shout out. I'm Carl Azus for CNN.